All right, so I've been reading some of the comments you guys have been leaving on my last video for the A6700, which primarily focused on like the video capabilities of that camera. Uh, and you guys have been asking quite a bit, how good is this camera for photography? So I did show a few different examples of photography in that video, but today we're gonna actually take this camera out. We're gonna do an entire POV photo walk in New York City. I'm gonna be bringing a couple different lenses with me. One is the Tamron 17 to 70. So the Tamron 17 to 70 is one of my favorite lenses for the APS-C camera because honestly, the 17 to 70 is a perfect focal range for doing most photography and also video. Uh, the 17 to 70 is also a stabilized lens, so it'll get rid of those little micro jitters on your camera if you're using like standard stabilization. But mostly I just love that 17 to 70 focal range. It's a perfect focal range for doing anything like street photography. So the other lens we're gonna bring with us, just because I have it, is the Sony 70 to 200. Now this lens is very expensive. It's a very professional lens. Uh, but honestly, if we're gonna go to New York and I'm gonna do street photography, I'm also gonna bring this because this is one of my favorite lenses. And if you can't get a good image with this lens, you, you might as well just stop doing photography because this lens is magical on this camera. So this lens's focal range equivalent is going to be about 105 to 300. So it's gonna be very good for zooming in from long distances away. So before we get too far in this video, I just wanna say the A6700 is a brilliant photography camera. This thing is pretty much on par with my A7 IV. Uh, so let's just see what the results are. So because I know you're gonna ask, all of these photos have been edited in Adobe Lightroom. Um, I like to personally undershoot my exposure a little bit when I'm doing photography, so I'm more exposing for the highlights. Uh, so they are gonna be a little bit on the darker side, but then when you edit them in post, they're gonna look really good. And if you guys wanna check it out too, I have created a few different presets from this actual video down in the link below. Uh, go check those out and download them if you want. But let's just get into it, let's get out to New York City. I'm trying to remember to like get my camera up though because I like to shoot like this a lot. I'm just gonna get these. Just the way that I like guys just like standing in the streets kind of fun. <laughs> Shooting on film. Gonna get these lamps real quick. I did a whole burst of those. Oh, 
Oh, that's so cool! I just think with going with a really high uh, shutter speed is sometimes while you're walking you just want a quick grab a photo and if you take it it won't get as much motion blur because it captures it really quickly. You want me first spot? I don't want to do that. Waiting for some bikers to come up this way with that background. I'm just going full zoom in so I get that big compression in the background. weird areas where I would like to go with like 70 to 200 because it would be fun for the compression but also maybe too close too much zoom for uh, the environment it's gonna be slippery <laughs> So we're on Canal Street. I'm going to attempt. We're using the 70 to 200 now, which is going to be 105 to 300 on this camera. Um, I got this little tiny sliver of an opening down Canal Street, down the city. I'm just going to zoom that sucker way in on the compression and see what we can do here. Let me put the screen down here more. Oh, that's a cool photo. You got like the crosswalk. You see, you still get the street in there. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, I might go up a little bit on the f-stop, maybe make that background a little bit more in focus. There's something just like really awesome about this lens though on crop body cameras. Um, I know it's kind of a ridiculously expensive lens to be putting on a uh, you know, lower budget camera, but some of the photos I captured on this lens last year with the ZV-E10 in New York City are just some of my favorite photos I've ever taken. So this lens is just very magical on these cameras. Let's get this top here.
What I also really like about this lens is you really have the ability to stand like a ways away from people, so you're more incognito doing your street photography, and uh, it just you can get that reach. Plus, then you get this crazy compression in the background. So, one of my favorite lenses by far I've ever owned. Crossing guards are just easy subjects because they just stand there in the middle of the street <laughs> doing something. Which way are we going? Kind of some fun photos. So we came up to the rooftop of my hotel here and I had no idea that this was going to be the view from this hotel. So uh, I found kind of a cool little gem here. We're opening this thing up to about F11. I might go a little higher here just to uh, get a little bit more sharpness in all of the image here. This is the Queensboro Bridge here. Yeah, this is a fun, side of, fun spot over here. Uh, let's get the big zoom out and see what that looks like. Okay, so once again, back to the 70 to 200. Still one of my favorite lenses for this camera. Let's get a third. Let's see, can we get the Empire? So it's a bit cold, a bit windy out this morning, so I'm kind of having a little hard time holding the camera at 200 millimeters. So if you guys are taking shots like this where you're getting like a wide angle shot of the city, it's best to go up to like something like F10, F11, just because you want more things in focus than you do out of focus. So uh, unless you're specifically trying to like get depth of field with like, let's say this bridge and you want the city to be background more blurred, then yeah, go with like an F2.8, but definitely go higher F stop when you're doing shots like that. It's a little
in Times Square you have a lot of people that are literally looking up at the screens. So like catching people like looking up is a really cool shot. Uh, plus you always get like the lighting from you know whatever they're looking at, it's lighting them. It's really amazing how fast when I put this camera up and it's just like immediately you see the green eye box around the eye and it's just like it's so fast on catching focus. There's a cool blue Tesla right there. If I can maybe I'll get this guy while I'm waiting. It's just so dark, I, there's like no lighting on. All right, so that is the Sony a6700 from New York City. I had an absolute blast using this camera. It's super easy to use. Uh, and that autofocus system on there, I know I didn't talk about it much in this video, but the autofocus system on this camera literally has been taken from the Sony a7R5, which is a $4,000 camera. Uh, it is super fast, it is super accurate. It has human tracking, it has animal tracking, it has car tracking, plane tracking, train tracking, tracking, train tracking. And it uh, also has insect tracking. Uh, it, it's amazing how well that actually works. Uh, the only one thing that I will say is that when you are in a big crowd of people, sometimes you do want to turn that like face tracking off. And I did have a little bit of problems with that. Uh, it's just when you have hundreds of people in the frame, it's always going to pick which it wants to. Uh, but it does have a cool feature in this camera that does have the face recognition. So if you actually set it to a person, it will give that person priority even if there's other people in the background. That's a really cool thing that you have on this camera. Now as far as the actual quality of the photos on this camera, this thing literally is on par with my a7 IV. Uh, it, it's incredible. I mean, that it's a 26 megapixel camera. It has new sensors. This is just an amazing camera. Like, I don't know what else to say about the A6700. Um, it's, it's amazing how far APS-C has come to making their cameras be very similar to their full frame counterparts. 
at half the price. So this camera comes in at like $1,400. It's an absolute steal for what you actually get in this camera. And then you also get the cool video modes with 10-bit and 4K 120. And I mean, having this camera as a content creator for photo and video is just, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> like, I don't know how much more to say about this camera. If you wanna spend like two grand or three grand, yeah, you can go up to one of those full frame cameras, but really you're not getting a whole lot more other than maybe like extra width, which you could also just get like a 10 millimeter lens for this camera and still get that. So like I said before, you guys, if you guys wanna check out the presets that I actually use when editing these photos, uh, there's a link down below. And if you guys have any questions on like editing these photos and you wanna maybe see a video on that, uh, leave me a comment down below. There are a couple things I do with the kind of like New York City nighttime photos to get that kind of cool like cyberpunk look to it so and anyways guys if you have any other questions about this camera please leave me a comment down below hit that like button if this video has been a help and as always guys i'll catch you on the next one later